Hi folks, I'm Don Meisner, and I'm here actually in downtown Messina at the Veterans Park. Beautiful spot with a grass river at my back. And uh, I want to use this as an introduction to all of you to stay with us where you're watching this right now. And in the weeks and months to come, I'm going to show you a lot of different videos of, on all different waters around the Messina area. But I think this is a great starting point. You know, this river is one of my favorite in the world. It runs right down through the center of Messina. And ironically, as I look out here right now, there's probably a muskie within 50 feet of me. And that's what makes this river so special. But it's only the beginning to the special things that you'll discover if you come to Messina and fish some of the surrounding waters. Rough. I've got one. Okay. Try to stay as steady as you can. This okay. is this to me is the thrill of the Grass River. Is being able, you don't know whether you're gonna get a walleye, a muskie, a bass. I'm sure I've got a bass. I'm using a wacky worm. But just waiting. This is a, this is this is so fun. This is so incredibly fun. Now, you can see how much that fish fought, and I want to show you something. That fish is probably only 11 inches, but an 11-inch river bass like this is going to put up so much fight because every minute of their life they're fighting. They're fighting current. They're fighting to stay alive out there with muskies all around them. But my hand span is nine to give you an idea. So he's about 11, just like I thought. Beautiful, dark mahogany. A lot of their dark color here is because of the tannic waters. And when I say tannic waters, that doesn't mean they're muddy. They're clear. But it's like looking down into a clear coffee or whatever. It comes from the tannin in the, in the leaves. But beautiful bass. But it does give them a dark color. Well, there's two worms I've lost because of the bass. But I'll show you what I'm doing. I am using... I was actually using a different color. <clears throat> but I'm using these worms that you'd use for largemouth. And I'll put this back in and I'll show you exactly how I hook it because some of you may not realize what quacky worm fishing is. It's the simplest thing in the world. For all of you that have never fished much, this is all you do. You run the hook through the middle of the worm. Presto, that's it. And then you cast out. So it's a simple, it's just like using bait. It's simple, but is it ever fun? That baby sure hit. You know, the, the, the real funny thing about this, I've got another bass on, but I'm fishing these like you would for largemouth. You wouldn't normally use six inch. <laughs> six inch. I can't even think. I can't even talk right now. Six inch plastic worms for smallmouth bass. You'll see this when I lift him up. So don't think that smallmouth won't hit a big bait, because they really will. Now, you know, these bass are small right here. I know you're thinking, those aren't that big of bass. But what I want you to remember is, there's also 16 and 18 inch bass up here, but there's muskies that feed on these bass. There's muskies, and you can catch muskies in any pool. And what really I want you to think about, imagine if you had the family with the kids, and everybody wants to try fishing, Maybe they get bored quickly or whatever. When you've got a place like this that's just full of fish, the kids are all gonna have fun because everybody can catch them. All you gotta do is get some plastic. You could use live bait, you could use crayfish, uh, but if you use plastic worms, you're not gonna kill the fish and you're gonna have great luck. And I'll show you again how I fish this. Chances are maybe we can get a strike right on a live strike here. But I throw it out. I'm throwing it up by some abutments by the bridge and then all I'm doing is letting it drift down naturally, just as if it was live bait. And I'm waiting to see if I feel a tap. Anything, any movement on the rod. They picked it up. Again, it's just like live bait fishing. But is it ever fun? Now that time I didn't get a strike right off. Sometimes they'll hit it just as soon as it hits the water. Now I'm getting, there's one. Picked it up. Picked it up, and he's on. Now again, that great big worm, and this, this is not a big bass. I think we had the biggest ones when we start. 
Usually when you go to a pool, you'll catch the biggest bass first. They'll be the hogs. They'll come in and they'll bully the little ones and they'll hit. But again, these are 10 inch bass and you can see how much fun this was. That time, he threw it back in my face. I, I guess that's fair retribution. These are beautiful little river smallmouth. Well, I'll just keep doing this as long as they want to do it. I'll play too. Hey, that's a nicer one, isn't it? Oh, I think it's about the same. I don't. I think you got a 12 inch or maybe, oh, maybe it's the same. Wait till you get a 14. I think it's a littler. <laughs> oh! Whoa! -ho -ho -ho! I told you there was a muskie in this pool, didn't I? <laughs> oh! Whoa! -ho -ho -ho! I told you there was a muskie in this pool, didn't I? Do you believe that? <laughs> Do you? <laughs> well, I, I've got my buddy Russ Pole because he's got the camera, and I'm just had another fish on. But I got to tell you what just happened. Russ just caught probably an eight-inch smallmouth. They jumped out there and we're bringing it in. We're both looking at it and he's just bringing it out of the water. I hope on his helmet or cap camera, you can see this. A muskie came up two feet from us and tried to grab that bass right as we were lifting out of the water. That is the thrill of fishing in a body of water like this, wading up to your knees and knowing that you could have a 40 pound muskie three feet from you. That's it. These rivers are gems, I'm telling you. There's one hitting mine. Not a bad one, is it? We don't need him, so don't worry. Okay. But this, we're getting a little bigger ones now. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. That's this, a nice this fish. Is bad, is it? No, you sure you don't want to make a comment? You're on video. Yeah, you know. This time I only cast about 10 feet outside of us, and I said, there's no way we're going to get one there. They must know we're here. We've been standing here in the water. That's a pretty nice, again, for a river smallie, this is a nice fish. This is uh, so much fun. You know, I've gone on and I've told you how, how magic it is, but it really is. And it, a lot of times, here's another hint. If you lay the fish in your hand and put no pressure whatsoever, they don't feel the same danger and a lot of and a lot of times they won't fight you <laughs> now I lost the, that was the last of the good colored worms now I got to come up with something different that maybe you'll catch me a fish okay. well, this is where I'm going to say goodbye to all of you <laughs> I'm laughing because if you know if you're a diehard you never say quit you always say one more cast and we got back here where we started and we we're going up the car and I said one more cast and bam, this bass hit. It seems like a nice one, so I thought it'd be a nice one to say goodbye with. It feels good. Yeah, that's a nice fish. It's a good one to end as I as I hook rust line with mine. This is a nice 12 inch fish and I'll tell you one thing that I'm super pleased about other than I just tangled this incredibly up together if you look at this fish there's no grubs on it it's as clean as can be and that is not normally the way you see bass in the summer from all the birds and everything they the, the, the little grubs that they the parasites that get into the fish's skin they don't hurt the fish but they make them less beautiful. But this fish is absolutely beautiful. A beautiful grass river smallmouth. We, we must have caught 50 of them. Probably already exaggerate. We must have caught 30 of them today. And But there's plenty here for you when you get here. We'll see you the next place in the next water that I decide to take you on and fish with us. Until then, I'll see you on Don Meisner.